entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. Lucy. All right, Frank. Well, Lucy, escorting one of the judge's bad boys? Come on, we're not going to fight. Uh, she's been going around with these ex-jailbirds so long. She's forgot how to talk. Are you men looking for something? Yeah, you're a little far from home, aren't you, convict? Don't pay any attention to them, Frank, please. Well, you all rehabilitated, convict? You know, he don't look rehabilitated to me, does he, to you? <laughs> I can't even say it. How can he be it? Let's go, Frank. Must be quite a gang of you ex-jailbirds working out of Judge Prince's place now. Quite a herd, huh? Oh, you're not leaving, are you? Why, I thought sure the judge had taught you better manners than that before now. Can't you leave him alone? We're just trying to help you, ma'am. I don't know what the judge can be thinking of, letting his niece ride around the country with a criminal. Well, the old boy must be getting soft in the head. You know, we have to protect ourselves. This convict's attacking us. Stop! Quiet down, I'll jail a lot of you. Ah, that's a little better. Well, believe me, Judge. Never mind, Frank. I've already heard everybody's side of the case. And it proves just one thing to me, Judge. That your boys shouldn't be allowed in town. They cause nothing but trouble. It seems you've said enough about that in your newspaper, Martin. I think the judge has a right to be proud of the work he's doing with these men. Well, now, don't misunderstand me, Annie. I'm behind this rehabilitation project of the judges 100%. I still think you ought to move the present site. Like uh, over to your acreage at Juniper Bend, eh? I just made that offer because I figured it was the best thing for Diablo. It'd get those convicts a bit farther away. They're ex-convicts, Martin. And I looked a long time before I found that spot at the lake. And I wouldn't trade it all for half the state. If rehabilitation can't work there, it can't work any place. Well, it is working, Judge. You're proving that. I'm not, Annie. My boys are. I have to admire your persistence, Martin, but the answer is still no. And as court's in session, that's my final ruling. Now, Frank, are you willing to drop your charges against Cody and Ed here? Sure, Judge, if you say so. After what you've done for the men boys out at your place, I'd drop the charge against the devil himself. Well, then that's settled. So suppose we just fine everybody five dollars. Usual fee for disturbing the peace. Uh, you were fighting, too, deputy, so the fine's the same, five dollars. Well, seeing as how your fighting was on the side of law and order, we'll suspend the fine. I guess I better get out of here myself. You'd be tacking a fine on me. <laughs> well, I hope you're on the bench if I ever get arrested. I'm surprised you didn't pay the fine for them, too. Well, I guess I would have, Lucy, if it had been necessary. But let me tell you, I wasn't always so concerned with the men who faced me. A man can make a mistake. A mistake he can't forget. Ever. Well, Martin, what happens to your plans now? Well, it seems they'll have to be changed. We 
But you better change them fast. It'll cost us plenty if he finds out there's oil on that land. A uh, judge is our only obstacle. Without him, that honor farm would fall apart. Then I could buy it with no trouble at all. I say we remove that obstacle my way. Before we do it your way, Cody, we've got to have a way out. See, I'm a cautious man. The thought of a rope around my neck doesn't exactly appeal to me. No, we have to find a way out. Hold it, mister. You talking to me? I didn't see anyone else push the boy. Apologize. You're talking all right. But I don't think I'm hearing you right. I said apologize. Listen to him, Ed. He sounds like a real mean man, don't he? Don't he, though? Maybe you'd like to try and make me apologize. Just once more, mister. Apologize. All right, kid. I'm sorry. Holy Talia, mister. Who are you? Does that really matter, son? Did you see that draw? I sure did, Ed. I've seen him before. Where? From the Dakotas, more than 10 years ago. His name is Jim Hayward. You boys remember that way out I was looking for? Yeah. Yeah. He's it. Cody Barnes apologized to me right in front of everybody. No kidding. You should have seen it. Well, if we had, we'd have stopped it, Tag. I don't like it, Annie. He sounds like a professional. What's he doing in Diablo? That's what I was thinking. Any suggestions? Just one. What's that? Let's find out. Hi, Judge. Jim Hayward? That's right. I'm Annie Oakley. That was my kid brother you stood up for outside, and I just wanted to thank you. It's my pleasure, miss. I don't like to see people shoved around. I'd like to talk with you, Hayward. Business? Suppose you tell us. Doesn't look like you're planning to be with us long. That depends. Now, uh, just what was it you wanted to find out? Well, we hear you're awful fast with a gun. Fast enough. That's supposed to make any difference? In Diablo, it does. Why'd you come here? Same reason as most everyone else, I reckon, looking for a place to settle. Settle what? Nice view. I like it. Clerk downstairs said you asked for this room special. Did he? Look, Mr. Hayward, it's our business to keep the peace. And when a man who draws as fast as you comes to town, there's usually a reason. We want to know what it is, or who it is. 
One way or another, we're going to find out. I'm afraid one of those ways will not be from me, Mr. Deputy. I just can't figure you, mister. I think the best thing, miss, would be not to try. He looks like a gunfighter, but I just don't think he'd kill anybody. You said it yourself. He's here for a reason. He could be an ex-convict, or maybe he's on a wanted list. Oh, we can check all the wanted lists. Say, if he is an ex-convict, maybe Judge Prince would know something about him. Worth a try. Well, that's all we know about him, Judge, so we thought you might be able to help. Does the name Jim Hayward mean anything to you? Yes, I'm afraid it does. What is it, Judge? What does he want? My life. He wants to kill me. But why? For a reason which I'm sure Jim feels is just. And I can't say but what I'd feel the same if I were Jim. It happened, oh, more than 10 years ago. Jim's younger brother was on trial for armed robbery. The jury's verdict was in. And it was my duty to pronounce sentence on young Hayward. All through the trial, he proclaimed his innocence. And I'll never forget the look in his eyes as I put him behind bars. Two years later, young Hayward and another convict attempted an escape. But they didn't get very far. The other fellow made good his escape, but Jim's brother was killed. Surely Jim Hayward doesn't blame you for what happened. Well, that's not quite the end of the story, Annie. Just let me show you something here. The convict killed in prison break found innocent of crime that jailed him. I sent an innocent man to jail and to death. But Judge, you still can't blame yourself. What about the jury? They convicted him. Yes, I tried to tell myself that, that it was an honest mistake, but it didn't work. I pronounced sentence, and the boy was innocent. How could you know, Judge? Now, how's not important, Lofty? I should have known, and I didn't. Is young Hayward the reason for your rehabilitation project, Judge? Well, mainly, and for other reasons as well. Men who might never have a second chance. If we could only figure out some way to get Hayward out to your ranch at the lake, show him what you're doing and tell him why. I'm sure we could show him how wrong he is. Well, that's a pretty big order, Annie, but I'm sure willing to try. That is, if you don't think Jim will feel I'm doing this just to save my own skin. Don't worry, Judge. He won't even know you're aware of his identity. But, Annie, how are we going to get him out to the judge's ranch? Lofty, would you like to go riding with me, even with a chaperone? <laughs> sure I would, but... Hey, wait a minute. You mean you're going to ask Jim Hayward to go riding? Right. But don't worry, Lofty. You're the chaperone. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye, Annie. Goodbye, Judge. Sure this isn't going to be just more questions, Miss Oakley? No more questions, Jim. You told me not to try to figure you out. That's right. Well, I think I have. And I think this ride will prove it. If you have a chance, boys, I'd like something for the obituary column. What are we stopping here for? I've seen ranches before. Anything special about this one? Very special, Mr. Hayward. Just wait and see. We 
brought a friend of ours we'd like for you to meet. He just arrived from Diablo. Jim, this is Judge Prince. How do you do, Jim? Uh, this is my niece, Lucy. Hello. Judge, why don't you tell Jim something about what you've been doing? I'm sure he'd be interested. Why, certainly. I'd be more than happy to, if he'd really like to hear. Go ahead, Judge. Well, this property is the result of a dream, one that I've had for years. I've established this ranch for ex-convicts, men who never had a real chance. It's pretty dangerous, isn't it, Judge? No. My charges have all kept their promises to me. A good day's work for a good meal, a pleasant place to live. You see, Jim, I once made a terrible mistake. I sent an innocent man to prison. For years after his death, I, I tried to lose myself. I quit law. I traveled from town to town. Man, I'd find it pretty hard to catch up with you after all these years, wouldn't he, Judge? Yes, I suppose he would. But you see, when I found this place, I knew I'd found my answer. Here was a place where I could give men in trouble a chance. A chance I couldn't give that man I sent to prison. You think what you're doing now makes up for your mistake, huh? No, Jim. What I did can never be erased. But I'm trying to make some kind of restitution in the only way I know how. Can you understand that, Jim? I'm sure he can, Judge. I better get back to town. I got things to do. You will come back and visit me again. Lucy and I'd be very pleased. I'll be back, Judge. you here, Jim? The reason's kind of obvious, isn't it, Miss Oakley? We know what you came to Diablo for, Hayward. We want you to get straight within yourself. Revenge isn't the answer. You think of a better answer? Mm-hmm. Forgiveness. He killed my brother. Well, that fast gun of yours isn't gonna bring him back, Jim. It'll give you nothing but trouble. Kill a man, and you gotta keep on running. And sooner or later, you'll run onto someone who's faster. Possibly. If you'd have gone for your gun back there with the judge, you never would have cleared the holster. What are you talking about? Suppose you show him, Annie. This month. Lofty, toss that piece of shale up in the air. When he throws it, draw and fire. Think it over, Jim. Maybe you'll change your mind about a lot of things. See you back in town, Jim. We, we heard a shot. Is there anything wrong? No. And he was just helping Jim make a decision. One man jury is out, Judge. It's in his hands now. chance we've been waiting for. Judge! Boys, help the judge into the house. Annie, don't... Don't blame Jim Hayward too much. He, he only did what he thought was right. 
Whatever he thought, Judge, he was wrong. Shot came from up there, Annie. Look! Let's get him, Lofty. Come on, Curtis. I think I did it. We gotta run. Shoot the judge, I swear it! They come down with your hands up. I'm not going to prison for something I didn't do. It's just like my brother. Nobody believes me. Stay back or I'll shoot. I think he's telling the truth, Lofty. There's only one way to prove it. Annie. I meant what I said. You won't shoot, Jim. For all your speed, you're not a killer. I believe you. Now put that gun down. years I practiced. I never pulled the trigger. I just couldn't. I know that, Jim. Not any more than you could kill Judge Prince. I figured you'd think I did it. I was going after him, Annie, but then I saw you riding toward me. You saw the man who shot the judge? Yeah, I think it's the same two I tangled with in town. Are you sure? Almost, Annie. I'd, I'd recognize them if I saw their horses. And those are the two that worked for George Martin. And I'll bet that ties in with Martin wanting to get the judge's property. Come on. I think I know where we'll find those two men. You'll have a better story on that for your paper tomorrow, George. Yeah, all about how that Jim Hayward gunned down the poor old judge. Keep that surprise look, Martin. You're all under arrest. What are you talking about? Those are the horses, Annie. I'm sure of it. The last man to start talking gets shot. Martin, he said we could blame it on to you. We did it on his orders. Why, you... That's good enough for us, isn't it, Lofty? Looks like you pulled that trigger after all, Jim, but on the right side of the law. And with you out of the way, Judge Prince, Martin figured he wouldn't have any trouble getting hold of this property. That oil's gonna make you a wealthy man, Judge. Not me, Lofty. My boys. Every penny is going into expanding this ranch and building others like it. Hey, Judge Prince. Yes, Jim? I've got a lot of years to make up for. I like to feel that I was one of your boys. After all, you and Annie gave me my first chance. I'd be very proud of that, Jim. You gonna stay in Diablo, Mr. Hayward? Why, sure. The judge is gonna need a lot of help developing this land now. You know what I'm gonna do, Annie? I'm gonna sentence this man. Yes, sir, I'm gonna sentence him to the best cooked meal in the Southwest. Will that be all right with you, Lucy? Of course, Judge. <laughs> you know, Judge, that's one sentence I'd like to get, too, with no suspension. <laughs> <laughs> with her hard riding. Street 
shooting. And suspense. Nine more miles. Only nine more miles after we traveled a hundred in the past two days. Oh, look, Lossie. Here comes Doc Seymour. Yeah. Hello, Hello Annie and Lofty. Sure I'm glad to see you back. Did you see the governor? We sure did. And he accepted Judge Boyne's resignation. Effective tomorrow. Here. See for yourself. Generally, it takes weeks to find a successor. But you know Annie, Doc. She told the governor if he wasted even a day, she might be responsible for making Judge Bowen a widower. She's close to right, too. If the judge don't get his wife into another climate, well, she just won't last. Poor Jenny, she's a lot sicker than she lets on to the judge. Well, as soon as we get back to town, we'll let the judge know that his resignation's been accepted. Maybe he and Jenny can make arrangements to go to Arizona tomorrow. I sure am sorry for him. After all he's done for other folks, now when he needs it, there's blame little help left. Well, as you say, what she needs is to be in a sanitarium where she can get the proper care. Yes, and what the judge needs is the $2,000 to send her there. Well, I guess the best thing for us to do is to ride on back to town and tell him. You're right, and I'll tell Jenny the good news myself. Be like a tonic for her. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Do our best. I got it. Say, Lofty, I was just thinking. If I ride over the canyon, I can go by school and see my little brother. That's a good idea. Now, Tag will be relieved to have his sister home again. Now you'll have someone to help him with the dishes. <laughs> See you, Annie. All right, Lucky. Lippy, you sure you know where that gold is hidden? You think I'd have killed my cellmate who told me and busted out of the pokey if I wasn't sure? It just so happens I'm financing this expedition. I got a right to ask questions and get answers. He's right, Lippy. This here's the fourth charge we've set off. I'm just as interested in that 40,000 down there as anybody. Now then, you got a match? We keep blasting and blasting. Somebody's gonna hear us.
I'm Lofty. There were two others. Who are they? I don't know. When we get this from the tower, maybe we can get them to talk. Come on. It's like the nailed lippy. What if he gets tossed back in jail? How do we find that box of Wells Fargo gold? I don't know. But if they find out who he is and that he murdered his cellmate, he never will get out of there alive. We should have made him draw us a map. I tried it a dozen times. One thing's certain, we'll have to get him out. That's real easy talk. I'm going to have a look at that jail. What? What if someone sees you? No doubt someone will. But this is a long ways from Colorado and the Barranca National Bank. You're taking a long chance. So did the boys that robbed Wells Fargo. And I aim to get my half of that 40000 You know where to meet me. I'll see you at sundown. So your name's John Smith. Just remember, there's not any Pocahontas around here to save your neck. Think it over, because we'll find out who you are sooner or later. I'm starting by sending a few telegrams and making a routine check. He's hiding something, Lofty. Either about himself or the two men he was with. Maybe both. Yeah, I guess so. It's been a half an hour since Tag went for Judge Bowen. You know Tag. He probably went to the judges by way of the candy store. <laughs> Honest, Judge, I tell you, Leanne, he made me promise. Annie, I can't thank you enough for getting my resignation accepted. Well, now you and Jenny can leave on that coach for Prescott tomorrow. Oh, no, we can't leave that soon. You've got a prisoner that has to be tried, you know. Well, the governor says your replacement will be here Monday. That's plenty soon enough for the trial. It's only a misdemeanor case, Judge. Why, his gun wasn't even fired. Now, be honest. Which is the most important? A prisoner that has to stay here for 60 to 90 days anyhow? Or your wife's health? You're right, Annie. Jenny must come first. I only had the 2,000 to put her in a sanitarium. And she'd get well, and all our troubles would be over. Hi, Judge. Well, just who are you, sir? I came to see about your wife's health. Uh, a doctor? You could call it that. Sit down, sir. Judge? I'm going to see that you get $2,000 to put your wife in a sanitarium. Well, I don't understand. You, a total stranger. A stranger that doesn't like to see people worry. Now, you, you worry about your wife. Take someone else, a good friend of mine. He's worried because he's locked up in your jail down the street. What are you getting at? You try my friend, John Smith. Turn him loose. And $2,000 is all yours. Get out. Do you hear me? Get out of here. No, nah, no. Nah. No sense in making yourself sick, too, Judge. Look at it this way. He's not booked on a serious crime. It's a simple misdemeanor. He resisted arrest. Did he? Now, how did he know that fellow was a lawman? For all he knew, he could have been a road agent. Oh, no. Crime's a crime. The size of it has nothing to do with it. If your wife didn't get the proper care when she could have had it, Judge, that would be a real crime. I've resigned. There'll be a new judge here Monday. But as a matter of convenience, you'll try Smith tomorrow, won't you? Two days or 60, who'll know the difference in care? I'll know the difference. Sure, you'll know. You'll know your wife is provided for. There's 500. The rest of it tomorrow, after Smith walks out of your court a free man.
something wrong, Judge? That man in there, is he John Smith? That's the name he gave, yeah. Have him in court in the morning. I'll hold his trial at 9.30. 9.30? Prescott stage leaves at 8. If the judge wants to hold trial tomorrow morning, Lofty, I'm sure he must have a very good reason. Uh, exactly. Uh, Doc Seymour says uh, Jenny's too weak to move for a day or two. The Doc said that? Why, you let... No, no wonder you're so down in the dumps, Judge. And since you will be in town, it'd be foolish for you not to hold one last court session. I knew you'd understand, Annie. This is kind of throwing you a wide loop, but who knows what we might come up with. I understand how you feel, Judge, about not having enough money to send Jenny to a sanitarium. Here, take a look at these. These are posters of men that have rewards offered for them, from $500 to $5,000. We haven't seen any of them here in Diablo, so I thought you might run across some out in Arizona. Uh, yes, uh, you never know, do you? It's just wishful thinking. You know, I think the best thing for you to do, Judge, is to go home to your wife and get some rest. You're right, as always, Annie. Uh, see you at 9.30 in the morning in, in court. Yeah, sure, Judge. We'll be there. Annie, what do you make of that? The judge is up to something or... Annie, what's the matter? What's in your mind? Lofty, I know as well as you do that Doc Seymour left town till tomorrow. And I doubt if he told the judge that Jenny couldn't be moved. So? What's this? I don't know. At least not for sure, but... Well, I just think it might be a different kind of a doctor that convinced the judge he should stay over in whole court tomorrow. $3,000 reward for Amos Belcher. Wanted for embezzlement and bank robbery. Notify City Marshal Bronco, Colorado. Amos Belcher. Well, I never heard of him. I sure hate to think what I'm thinking about Judge Bowen. Do you suppose this Belcher or someone's gotten to him? Well, something's happened, that's for sure. He seems so scared, so sort of... Lofty, do you know that man? Do you think he might be one of the two that got away? I never got close enough to take a good look. But even if it is, what's so important about John Smith to take a chance like this? Well, we've got all night to sleep on it. And so is the judge. If your wife can't get the proper care, that would be a crime. No one will know the difference or care. What's the difference two days in jail or 60? Just a matter of convenience. Your wife can't get the proper care. Drink this milk, all of it. Ev, Ev, what's wrong? What's troubling you so? I told you before, nothing's worrying me. Don't try to fool me, Ev Bowen. You hardly slept a wink last night. Oh, you're just imagining things. That's what you're doing. After 39 years imagining things about you? No. I don't know what it is, but I know you got a problem. You're my problem. But that's not it. This is something different. Promise me one thing, one little thing. No matter what you do, Ev, don't do something you'll be ashamed of. You won't be ashamed of me, Jenny. I promise. I promise. Now go ahead and drink your milk like Doc Seymour says. Day after tomorrow, we'll be in Prescott, and you'll get the care you need in a sanitarium. Judge Boss? That's him. Well, a couple hours from now, we ought to be back digging up that 40,000 again. You seem mighty sure. Why not? If he was going to turn us down, he and his wife would have been on the Prescott stage, and that left at 8. Well, I guess you're right. Now we'd better be getting to town. Good morning, Annie. Hey. Good morning, Lofty. All ready for court? Expecting a long trial, Annie? Taking your lunch to court? <laughs> Scarcely, Lofty. But I must admit, it's food for thought. Now that you've had a chance to sleep on it, what do you think the judge will do? He'll do what's right, Lofty. He has to. Even if we have to give him some help. I'm helping too, Lofty. Annie and I are keeping our eyes peeled for that crooked banker they're looking for. And the other fella, too. OK, Mr. Detective. Let's start looking him over.
wait here. I'll be back after the trial. John Smith, charged with resisting arrest. Will the arresting officer please rise? Yes, Your Honor. Deputy, your complaint here says the prisoner resisted arrest. Did he know you were an officer? Did you tell him, call out to him? Well, I'm wearing my badge, just like I am now. Anybody can see it. I didn't ask you for your conclusions. Did he say he saw it? No, of course not. Then if he didn't know who you were, how could he have been resisting arrest? I'd like an answer to that question. You see, Your Honor, even though Smith's gun wasn't fired, which we freely admit, the two men with him did shoot at me. We're not trying the two others. The question here is, since you didn't identify yourself, how do you know they didn't think that you were a road agent? Your Honor. Annie, your uncle's deputy is testifying, not you. I know that, Judge. But I'm asking for permission to appear here as what lawyers call a friend of the court. You know, Judge, there are laws and laws. And it seems to me the case being tried here calls for an application of some laws that some of us sometimes overlook. You'll find it all right here, Your Honor, in the very book you used 24 years ago when you took the oath as judge. If your wife can't get the proper care, that would be a crime. Would you take a look at the book, Your Honor? Will the prisoner rise? Your name, John Smith? I don't believe that's your name any more than I believe you didn't know this man was a law officer. Besides, no one is threatening or trying to bribe this court, which I want to say here now, some unprincipled crook did. Smith, or whatever your real name is, you know it and I know it. You're as guilty as sin. Therefore, this court finds you guilty as charged and wishes it could uncover the many other things that must be against you. I'm sentencing you to 120 days in jail. All right, deputy, lock him up. Judge. Judge double crossed us. We're taking Lippy back. What do we do now? The bell tower. 
It's right across the street from the sheriff's office. Get up there and cover me. I'll get Levy out of jail. I'm sure it was Manny. One up the street and around that corner. If the doctor risks showing his face in this town, he must want Smith out of jail worse than we thought. What do we do, sis? Let's find him. He's not hiding around here, Tag. This is where he came. He can't be far away. <laughs> I figured you'd show up. Yeah, we were all expecting you, Belcher. Being smart isn't going to help you much now, Deputy. Take the cuffs off of him. It took so long, Lofty, but they had a third one on the roof across the street to cover them. Well, as they say, Annie, better late than never. Lock them up. Well, that makes three of a kind. And although it's not according to Hoyle, this three of a kind gives the Diablo jail a full house. <laughs> Just think, tomorrow this time we'll be in Prescott. Thanks to Annie. No, thanks to you, Judge. You did the hard work all by yourself. I suppose it was my idea to send this telegram to the marshal in Colorado, giving the number of those bills Belcher tried to bribe me with. Well, I guess not. I think that was an idea of Providence. Anyhow, the important thing is that the reward money paid for the sanitarium. The really important thing is what you did, Annie, when you walked down that island court. You helped my husband find something he almost lost. 